Good evening, fellow commanders, and welcome back to the port. We are looking at the modifications on the Tier 5 French Premium Battleship Dunkirk, Aiming Systems Mod 1, and Damage Control Systems Mod 2. The Dunkirk is a true battle cruiser. It has three repair parties, with this build anyway, and three catapult fighters. Before the advent of the hated aircraft carriers, I would have recommended the Spotter 1 on one of the few ships that I would have recommended it on. But because you need the air cover, I recommend the Catapult Fighter. We are running the Epic Battle Booster because it makes everything better. Kind of like bacon. We've got the permanent Type 9 camouflage and the highly sought after and vaunted Beta Weekend number one flag. All right, the Dunkirk has 52,600 hit points and a torpedo reduction of, it looks like, 25%. Artillery, you've got two turrets, each with four cannons. They're 330 millimeters. With this build, they shoot out to 18.3 kilometers. They reload in 28 seconds. They turn around in 29 seconds. I apologize, even with my super reading glasses, I can't see the HE shell damage. Looks like 4,800. 35% fire chance. The AP shells do 9,700 damage. All of that secondary armament faces to the rear, like the Jean Bart and the Richelieu. So that's only good if you're being chased by a destroyer. Look at that AA defense. It's 51. You will see what 51 AA defense gets you in this match. Our maneuverability is also 51. Our maximum speed with this build is 31.4 knots. With a 14.7 rudder shift time, the turning circle is 730 meters. And our concealment by sea, 14 kilometers. By air, 11.7 kilometers. When firing in spoke, 11.9 kilometers. Look at all that green. It is not money. It's easily penetrated armor. As you can see, the turrets, at the very least, are heavily armored. One is a super firing turret, but there's your citadel a little bit above the waterline. You have that armor back in. I fear it won't do much. Legend has it. The bow can be penetrated by 15-inch guns. The Queen Elizabeth, for one, the war spite, for another, should go right through that bow armor. Higher tier ships, of course, probably will as well. All right, so our commander's Robert Jajard. In a stunning display of incompetence, I neglected to include his screen in this video. And I had since advanced them, so it would not be fair to show you incorrect data. He's inspired by Cunningham and Emil Pratt for the speed boost. His skills are flammable cannoneer, crisscross, as opposed to gyrating drill bits, which would lower your maximum speed by 10%. Marksmanship, reaching out XXL for the range boost, and will to rebuild in the legendary slot. Jean Jard's base trait increases your AP shell penetration, which is a valuable trait, especially in the Dunkirk, which has low caliber main guns. All right, we're on north. It is a domination match, fours and fives, with an aircraft carrier. So needless to say, aircraft carrier aside, I'm hoping to do well. Thankfully, we're not in the middle spawn. We had to back up out of there. We are going to take our ship. That's a camouflage job. Not very impressive, France. All right, so we're going to head to A. And I see other ships coming with me. I'm very pleased about that. That big thing on the back of the ship is actually used for fishing. I don't know if you know that. Yep. The sailor who leaves the toilet seat up, they hang him on that. And then drop him in the water when there are sharks around. And then they pull the shark up and make a beautiful flambe out of it later. All right, so we're sailing towards A. Even as fast as the ship is, we're not there yet. 
And because I think the aircraft carrier is over there, I light that square up. We'll see if I'm right later in the match. And I'm spotted. You know, the ship has very poor concealment, which I found odd because it's kind of low to the water. But who am I to say that that's accurate or fair? There's the enemy Dunkirk. I'm shooting HE, probably because I did not check to see what I had loaded before the beginning of the match. But no worries, I start a fire. Then I see a destroyer, and I would not swap to AP anyway. So because I think this is going to be meaningful in some way, I make a maneuver here that probably won't do anything. There's a Fubuki over there, too. Sneaky Japanese destroyer. I hope somebody shoots at it. He's putting up a smoke screen. I shoot at him anyway. And as you can see, due to the skill of my gunnery platoon, we totally missed. I do see a torpedo here with my name on it, so I uh, make a good catch right there. I think I probably should have tried to go around to the right and then cut back. No matter, that damage is inconsequential. Someone else is shooting at the enemy Fubuki. I think it might be a great chance to get an easy kill, but he does it for me. And somewhere in that smoke cloud is the Gata. So I'm going to shoot at the Dunkirk again. And he's giving me almost a broadside. Maybe if I had shot AP, it would have done a lot of damage. But let's be frank, that HE did a fair amount of damage. And I did not want to switch anyway because this Gata is up to no good. That smoke cloud. Thankfully, a friendly blue team cruiser comes in and engages the Gata. Plus, he's probably still under a torpedo reload. And before I can kill Pinch him, he gets killed. So back to the Dunkirk. And as you can see, because it is a French battleship, it's mandatory when engaging other ships, I have to retreat for at least part of the battle. So that's what I was doing there. Now I'm going back forward again because, you know, other people are shooting the Dunkirk. And again, he turns... I guess he's trying to bow tag those other ships, but did he remember the last time I spanked him with HE? I guess not. Let's remind him. This hurts. Ooh. And he is very damaged. Unfortunate for me, I did not get the kill. But I will take the 27. Is that 27 or 37? I will take whatever damage I accrued off him and the assisted capture of this base. Now the next part of this match is going to be very boring. So I guess I should surmise as to whether or not the Dunkirk can carry a match. At tier 5, maybe. maybe. At tier 6, absolutely not. You're going to be firing a ton of high explosive at tier 6. Because there are going to be many ships that your low-calorie main battery guns will not penetrate. Also, if you try bow tanking, your guns will get knocked out. Now, I'm not saying you got to point something at the enemy and the bow is better than the side or the rear of the ship. But just be prepared for one of your two turrets to get knocked out. Historical note, not that I study the history of these ships before I read about them on the air. But apparently there was some kind of big, thick divider wall between the four guns. So there were two on one side of the wall and two on the other side of the wall. Hey, we citadeled that ship. We're over 45,000 damage. I'm pretty stoked. So in theory, your whole turret shouldn't get knocked out if it was accurate. Just two of the guns would be down and the other two would still be okay. So, I mean, look, the French didn't do everything wrong. They thought about that. They were like, the other half of the gun should still be up, you know. Perhaps that is too complicated for wargaming to, uh, to program into the game. I just don't know. The last thing I programmed was a Texas Instruments TI-99-4A after I flipped a game called Parsec. Please save your applause until the end. All right, so we've got a Texas over here. Along with the Devonshire, I'm shooting at the Texas. I'm hoping to hit anything. And 
Technically, I did hit anything, but I did not do a whole lot of damage there. Not very impressive. I feel very confident, though. We have a destroyer in front of us, and I see the opportunity to kill pinch to make back for somebody kill pinching the Dunkirk for me. And I'm going to take it because I'm that kind of guy. Kill pinch engaged. Success achieved. We go over. It sucks when your eyesight starts to go. 50,000 XP. And one kill, which we didn't really do a whole lot to facilitate. And because I love torpedoes, you and I both know. If I could run into those torpedoes, I could. And we're still shooting at the Texas, but because he's turning away, he has become a less desirable target. As evidenced by the... Not very impressive amount of damage I just did there. So I see the Fuso, clearly a much better target, offering me full broadside. Well, thank you very much, sir. I will take some. I will take some full broadside coming right up. Because I'm looking at the Texas, and he's like doing some kind of turn, and I'm like, oh, my luck, all my shells will just bounce off him and whatnot. Yeah, that wasn't very impressive either. Yep. So keep in mind, folks, when I do these videos, you're talking to a guy or listening to a guy who has a winning percentage of 51%. So I'm just showing you what the average player can expect from the Dunkirk in a match. That's all. You know, you can watch other videos with really good players. I watch them all the time. They help me get better. I'm just going to give you a little bit of realistic expectation of what the center of the bell curve can do in this ship. And what we did is got Mother Citadel and got over 85,000 damage. And the Fuso compliantly continues to sail in a straight line. Broadside, dear Mr. Fuso, thank you very much. Oh my God, do you see that red indicator? Why I'm busy admiring my hit to the Citadel and my high caliber, we are the victim of a double torpedo strike. Somehow I have now attracted the attention of the enemy aircraft carrier. I do shoot down a couple of planes that is small compensation for the injury I've suffered. And as the Texas turns and runs, I thought uh, Texas is one supposed to do that. I'm going to continue shooting them. Now let's think back to the beginning of this match when I predicted on the map where the enemy aircraft carrier would be. I am not Kreskin. I did not hold an envelope to my head before the match. But someone else is going to kill the Texas. It hurts. Dead ahead is the origin of these aircraft carrier planes. So I may have been off by a square or two, maybe. But I think I correctly indicated where the aircraft carrier was in the beginning of the match. You're welcome. You are welcome. Don't worry. Next game, I will be totally wrong. As you can see by the icons, they did land a HE bomb on my ship, even though my best efforts... To shoot it down, I launched a fighter plane and or dodge it. We're not successful. I am flaring out here to get both guns on target. I will engage my heal and my damage con. I am hoping that the Ryusho compliantly sails into that for a broadside. But I'm telling you folks, I've noticed I have the problem. Everybody has the problem. You think aircraft carrier, soft skin ship, aiming high, not a big deal. Is a big deal because there's nothing but air there. You're shooting through the aircraft anyway. And I've been guilty of this as well as other players. You have to aim at the water line. And I do hear, but I think he is backing up too fast. I didn't lead him enough. I underestimated the backing speed of the Ryujo. I thought only French ships could back up that fast. Anyway, he was coming in for another torpedo strike. I feel very confident. Trust me when I say that. 
that I could have split the wickets on those torpedoes. Nevertheless, the game ends. 282,707 silver. Over 6,000 XP. 119,249 damage. A good deal of that was HE damage and the high caliber. I'm pretty satisfied with this match. Even though we were not at the top of the board. Is that a Leander? Good job, Mr. Leander. Either way, that is the Dunkirk. I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like and subscribe.